right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from San Diego as per usual. And today I'm joined by Jackie Rainforth, who is in Calgary, Alberta in Canada. How are you doing, Jackie? I'm well, thanks. Absolutely. And Jackie is from the Rainmaker, Biz Rainmaker Business Solutions and the author of The Badass Guide to Super Selling, which uh, Jackie has in her hands right now. Delve deeper, sell better, achieve faster results. Okay, so let's, let's just get straight into this, Jackie. Sure. What makes for a, how do you become a badass sales superstar? Well, I think it's doing the little things that the other people fail to do. That's, that's the big thing, you know, whether, it, it, I mean, there's so many things, but it's those little nuances, those little things that customers pick up on immediately. And those are the things that help you stand apart from everybody else. So it's, um, that's what I've done. so the details, so really, um, it's the things that other people don't pay attention to. And I think that's, I think it's, it's an interesting concept because I think today people are, they're kind of so used to people forgetting about the little things, overlooking details, um, not really paying attention, people being distracted. So you can kind of stand out doing, as you say, just paying attention to the details. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's, you know, it's the little things that, uh, I mean, it's follow up. It's shocking how many people don't follow up. Shocking. Mm -hmm. And you know, that it's little things like sending a handwritten thank you card or, you know, thinking outside the box and doing things that other people wouldn't do and creating cheat sheets or creating something that makes a process simpler for your client. You know, salespeople are the conduit between the company and you know, the product or service that they're selling. They are the communicators. They need to find out what's not working so that they can make it happen for the client, make it simpler and easier to buy and to use those services. And so it's about, you know, thinking about those little things that you're not doing that you could be doing to make it easier for your client. Yeah, and absolutely. And I think one of the other things is that it certainly frustrates buyers all the time is when you feel that the salesperson just keeps, especially once you've bought, the salesperson keeps pushing you off to other people. Now, maybe those other people are better placed to solve your problem, but you always want to feel like at least there's somebody watching over. Right, absolutely. Someone who's you know managing and making sure that everything's taken care of. And I think one of the things, you know, when you talk about people being you know, sent off to another department, there is nothing worse than a client having to explain the entire situation again. Mm right to whatever mm. department that is and that's a little thing that a salesperson can do they can prep the department for the customer's call so the customer you know they can just say hey listen joe blow salesperson has talked to me and this is what i can do to help you out you know and you know this is from what i understand and, and just get that clarification is this where we are and is this what you're looking for it just makes the process so much simpler for the client and that's what they're looking for is Simplicity, make it easy to do business. That's it. That's what they're looking yeah, for. Yeah, absolutely. And I think and, and I think people will be surprised sometimes how difficult you or your company are to do business with. I don't mean yours, obviously, oh. but I'm just saying uh, others. I, I, I often tell the story of I, I took over a company a number of years back, a great product, and people love the product, love the service, love the people who did it. But when I first went and visited them, some of the key customers, they all told me the same thing. So, love the product, love your people terrible company to do business with why why <laughs> because we just made it hard i mean that's but part of where you to go is go de deconstruct what was making it hard but i think a lot of companies will be and people will be surprised how hard they make it for uh, customers to do business with them right and you know it's interesting i do one sales tip video per week i post mm -hmm. a lot on, on linkedin anyway but i do this video and one of last week's video was have you contacted your customer and asked them, what can you do you know, to make their lives easier? Is it a processing thing? Is it a purchasing thing? Is it credits? Is it, I mean, it's all those little things, those little processes that the salesperson is that hub. They are the person who is controlling everything. And they could, they could you know, just make it so much easier. They really could. I dealt with clients, uh, engineers and architects who, you know, great big database, a book of products and things or, we're trying to fight to get online to try and find these products. He created a cheat sheet and set it mm -hmm. up into, you know, good, better, best for them. 
these are all the products that go with it. It just sounds kind of it. They're little things, but when you listen to clients, they have the most valuable information. They, you know, they can help you be superstars. They really can. Mm-hmm. All you have to do is ask. Really. Yeah, and, and it's funny that I just want to underline that point because um, the ask point, because sometimes, you know, there's that old kind of old idea of, well, if they're not complaining about anything, you know, don't say anything, everything's good, like, don't, don't ask, don't, don't preempt something. Right, fear, right? Their fear, yeah. the fear is, oh, it's going to cause me more work, or it's, you know, I'm going to get a rant, or, you know, whatever it is. You've got to push past that fear. I mean, Mm -hmm. you've got to push past fear on so many levels, but particularly there because you want to be providing that excellent standard of service for your client. That's what people expect today. It is the age of excellence. People are expecting nothing but the best. And if you don't, if you don't make it, you know, you don't make the cut. You're you're not going to make it. And your company isn't going to make it. And they're going to find somebody else. I mean, look at technology. We've got yeah. competition at our fingertips, really. You know, you used to worry about the guy down the street. You don't, it's, it's a lot different world now. Yeah, so. you're, you're worrying about the, the guy all over the world. And, and the point that you make there, I think it's, a, it's an also an excellent one, is that, to be honest, it doesn't, it, it, there's very few differenti- majorly differentiated products or services out there today. Most of them are relatively commoditized to one degree right. or another. So the only place you can really differentiate yourself is in your interaction, your service, and, and how you engage with, with prospects and customers. Right, exactly. And, you know, one of the things that I talk about in the book, it's a whole chapter actually, is how selling has changed and how we've shifted in terms of, you know, moving even from just that consultative selling to, to really hands-on partnership selling. And all the things that have happened to, you know, to kind of facilitate that. People don't want to be sold to anymore. I mean, if you've ever been to a timeshare or anything like that, we've had bad experiences. People don't want to be sold to. They, they need people to point out things that are missing and to make things better for them from that point of view. That's what they're looking for. Yeah, and then I always find myself is, I mean, you really crave the salesperson who's going to tell you something you don't know, help you look at something in a different way, bring the experiences have, they've had with other people who have similar problems, maybe in your industry. It's like even when you get somebody who comes to your home for something like, I love the guy who says, who says you know, we're probably not, you know, we're not going to be the cheapest, but here's all the extra things. Here's what we do and here's how we justify it. And they say, and here's some advice. And obviously the decision is yours, but I love that. Well, Hey, it's all about differentiation. There's so much noise out there. There's so many people. I mean, most of the time you're either selling a product or service that the customer already has and do they Mm -hmm. really need a new one, whatever Mm -hmm. it is, or, you know, there's a ton of competition. So everything is about differentiation. It's differentiation from the minute you meet them and the words start coming out of your mouth all the way through to the things that you do, the things that you provide. And and again, all the way through to the end game, that follow-up, it's following up, you know? the fortune is in the follow-up it really is and but people forget that how many you know sales people get the sale and then like you say never ever follow up with a client again you know realtors people are buying the biggest expensive thing they've ever purchased in their lives and a realtor never calls them back yeah yeah <laughs> where you send them a you know calendar really like it should be yeah more. exactly yeah. Be to, yeah and you can put it with all the other calendars that you got from all the other realtors yeah. um yeah. so so when you were when you were moving from surviving to thriving um what are other than follow what are some of the other s- simple things that you suddenly realize that if you did them that you know your success would increase little things taking notes taking mm. notes having business cards on you i cannot tell you people think oh yeah you can just go like click and link in and get the connection. No, those are touch points. Those are absolute touch points. It's almost getting back to the, the old ways. I mean, there's value in that. There really is. How many salespeople, like, do you talk to yourself or, you know, that you see up there? They just don't take notes. They sit there and just, mm-hmm. you know, the stats are what you can't even remember 25% of the conversation by the end of the day. By the time you're following up, how in the world can you possibly remember a week later? And with, you yeah. know, decisions taking that much longer because they're much more collaborative than ever before how in the world can you remember what you talked about two weeks ago or a month ago or 
whatever. I mean, it, it just, it's mind blowing to me that people do not take notes. And it's a yeah. common courtesy that shows professionalism. You know? And that's what I was going to say. It's a common courtesy to say what you're saying is of interest to me and I need to be able to recall this. And also, and like you said, I mean, if somebody's not taking notes, you're like looking at them going, yeah, okay. So either you don't care about what I'm saying or, wow, you must have, you must have a fantastic memory if you're going to remember everything I said going out of it. I mean, have you ever had to say, um, do you want to write this down? Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's Oh. And, the, and the other thing too, there's, I mean, I think, yes, you can take notes on your laptop and everything, but there's something still uh, about somebody actually taking a pen and notepad out and writing down that is for both parties, for the, the, for the buyer or the prospect, it really goes, okay, somebody's putting a real effort into this and whatever. And the actual, I think there's been some research around the actual, um, uh, the mechanics of, of getting and writing and stuff actually makes it more important to you in the long run than it does of something you just type into a, a yeah. laptop or whatever. It's kinesthetic learning, right? You're mm -hmm. hearing, yeah. you're hearing, you're, you're writing. It's, you remember when you do mm -hmm. those things. And here's the thing, how many people forget to do the things they commit to or do the things that the client's asked? And it, you know, I've, I've managed lots of salespeople. I own my own sales agency. I, you know, I, I, I do a lot of stuff. I train. I see this stuff happening over and over and over again. And it's just, it just blows my mind. We're even asking for a referral. That's another one today that is oh, so yeah. cool because everything's word of mouth. And how mm -hmm. often do you say, hey, who do you know that might be interested in, you know, whatever product or service that, that you, you're talking about? There's a brain shift that happens. A lot of times people say, oh, well, you know, I, I told them I do this or that. Well, that's great. It's still sitting on the right side of their brain. Unless you ask them and they consciously think about it where it shifts to the other side of the brain and logs into memory, they're not going to remember. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's a physiological change that happens. So you have to ask for the referral and it, Hey, and a referral is transfer of trust. I mean, honestly, that is everything these days in business because people don't societal trust levels are the lowest they've been in the history of the world. I, I, yeah, right. I'd say, say they're in the negatives now. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, to your point, though, I mean, not just asking for referrals, but also asking more than once, asking at different times. Like if you have a customer and you ask them for a referral, um, you know, they may not think of it at the time. They may not realize whatever. But then later on, they may, um, you know, later on, they may suddenly at a different time, if you ask them again, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, actually, now I do know somebody who might. Because I think sometimes when salespeople are told to go ask for referrals, they kind of go, okay, this is another chore. I'll go and I'll ask everybody, do you know anybody? No, okay, see, there you go, I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's almost trying to prove a point that no, that doesn't yeah. work. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's um, yeah, it, it does work. It really does. And, you know, I do it all the time. Most of my business is done on referral by mm -hmm. based on word of mouth. And it, it, it is one of the key things that I attribute my success to. And, you know, people are struggling right now. You, you have to start thinking outside of the box. Where is a niche market that, I, that nobody else is calling on? Is there some lock that hasn't been overturned? Is there, you know, a process I could be improving? Is there something I could be providing to my, to my client to help me stand out? You know, mm -hmm. even, even providing a video, right? Yeah. Or, or leaving a, a text voice message. I mean, mm -hmm. anything, anything that makes you unique and different is what you're yeah. doing. And I think and nowadays, especially, you know, with um, a lot of people, most people having to do virtual selling and Zoom and all of that is, is, yeah, put on your camera and put a face to the name. Don't, because I mean, I've seen people who don't want to do that. They're fine, like walking into a room full of people, but they don't want to go on camera for some reason. Yeah. Uh, online. And you think is go put a face to the name. And even if the other person doesn't switch on their, your camera or their camera, and you don't have to keep it on for the whole time. At least you have made the effort. You have made that connection and it'll stand to you. I guarantee you. You know, salespeople need to be flexible. They need to be able to pivot. Times mm -hmm. have changed. And, you know, I was speaking for the Canadian Association of Professional Speakers this week. And I said, guys, you know, it's really, really important. You need to go digital in everything mm -hmm. that you do. Things are not going to go back. I mean, they will somewhat, but 
they're not. And, you know, you think mm-hmm. about the efficiency of a Zoom meeting. I mean, oh my gosh, you know, in some cities yeah. where you're traveling an hour just to, to get someplace and an hour back, look at how time efficient it is. And, it is. you know, we all could do more, you, you do more with more time. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. But I, I but I love that thing though uh, about um, that. There's no real like secrets. It's back. It's fundamentals, and it's the simple things and the fundamentals. Because I was talking to somebody about this the other day, and you know they brought up like sports, and they were saying like, oh, you know, apparently Kobe Bryant was legendary for going to the gym at 5 a.m. in the morning. And he didn't practice trick shots. He practiced the basic drills that he would have practiced in high school every day. Yeah. And I said like, I'm big into martial arts, and like often when when we go to class, like some, you know, some days the, you know, the master will say, okay, we're going to go over basic techniques. And like, you know, we're doing these for like 15, 20 years or whatever. And you're back doing basic techniques because you know what? The first thing to go is the fundamentals. Yeah. Cold calling. Oh my gosh. You know, mm-hmm. I cannot tell you how many salespeople just avoid doing tasks that they don't like. And then they'll go from job to job trying not to be found out you know yeah. they're not, i mean it, it it and it's just about pushing through fear you know yeah. it's it's once you do it and you, you know i mean i was horrible i had gotten a job where i had to bring on three to four new people a week and and i'm like how am i supposed to do that right mm-hmm. and, but when you start and you you just get up there and do it and you consistently do it day after day after day you get better and better at it and that mm-hmm. confidence grows and yeah. that's what you need. But I know it's, it's all those basics that people just aren't doing anymore. And we need to get back to that in a, yeah. you know, in a different way. I mean, we need, we do need to add the whole social selling and yeah, of course, of course, of course, of course, but because we have to shift, we have to change, but yeah, it's, it is getting back to the basics for sure. Yeah. For yeah. Sure. And I think if you do that, I think it'll stand to you. Well, listen, Jackie, this has been fantastic. The, the book again, you will won't forget the title of this, The Badass oh. Guide to Super Selling. Look at that. It's Jackie mm. on the front there. <laughs> Delve deeper, sell better, achieve faster results yeah. and become a badass sales superstar. Exactly. Um, oh. And I made it easy for people to read. That's the nice thing because uh-huh. I know salespeople hate reading. <laughs> so <laughs> quick, easy tips and everything's, you know, straightforward to the point, simple. I make it really simple. Excellent. Yeah. And all of Jackie's information will be in the bio below this video. But before we go, Jackie, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and your organization. Well, basically, I am a sales expert, author, speaker, and trainer. I speak at conventions although those have gone digital now mm-hmm. and everything's going Zoom. Uh, and I do sales training, it, a lot of which has, has switched to doing Zoom meetings, but I still do on-site at, at certain locations and things. But I'm here, I have a Selling Made Simple program. I try to do everything from a, an easy point of view. I've, I've broken things down into quick, easy steps that people can remember and they become very, very successful with. So that's what I do. And thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, yes. Listen, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.